Good afternoon. No music at all today. It's deadly serious. Back on to how America has been dispossessed of its entire sovereignty by the British nation. And all of the indigenous peoples were culled by the white man and the English speaking man as they transited rapidly through what was to become a Christian uh, state. Christian nation rather. Yeah, and the joke about that is the uh, land of the braves in the uh, national anthem and the sun coming up yeah, as the pagan god early in the morning. Okay, so straight into the bloodlines uh, and all of it uh, I've had to defer because I'm now in the middle of my sectioning there. I'm incapable of owning myself. I'm totally capable of explaining how the whole world has been brutalised eternally and has been rendered so chaotic that we cannot own any of the funding from any of our federal or central banks anywhere on the globe. It's totally stitched up by the elites that are in these bloodlines. These are the descendants of Anne Hutchinson. Yeah, and that is the joke about let's show you in writing that is the joke about Lagos Lego the rabbit do you get it? the Lego jokes all of the little word plays are the bunny ears yeah that is FDR that is George W. Bush yeah that is Mitt Romney these are the Supreme Court members that demonised the Jews in World War Two and all of the timeline gets all of that in place so that the whole of the global conflicts can be manipulated by what is the Empire State for the Windsor Crown across the Atlantic yeah, the joke that Field McConnell shared with me he understands that it is in British hands for all of that time he has not <laughs> been able to come for his beer or to make the follow up uh, Saturday evening interviews with me that we're going to reveal all of this for the transatlantic audience okay I'm being now victimized by the local doctors for my insight into the globalized fraud okay and the last little videos I made were on the uh, the war crimes in the regions of, of Odessa and all of the diasporas and the covers for that by placing people into the professoriate that come to work with me and all of it is vicious 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 okay I'm gonna click on it make it a little bit bigger but first let me show you what else is in store or what will follow on because this is the whole of the tabs that I intend to cover in the next video or two okay so that's Thimbleby and Lumley but we'll start at the top because we're focused on the mission to profile the bloodlines ever since uh, the uh, Lagos the Rabbit was the power base or the joke yeah all that needs to happen is that it's written with pen and ink and then it becomes world history <laughs> and dissecting that is really difficult so that's the descent of George W. Bush from Arius Copernicus Piso and the pharaohs of the 17th dynasty okay the following chart traces the descendant of the American presidents George Herbert Walker Bush and Franklin Delano Roosevelt from Philip of Macedonia circa 350 BC okay we've been there before let's now flip down through the pharaohs through the Roman emperors through the Piso family members and right into the west coast of Scotland and Ireland yeah Helena Galloway Roger de Quincy Elizabeth de Quincy the Commons the Earl of Buckins the Umfravilles Lucy de Caim the Borodons yeah the jokes about Borodin covered all of that the Umfravilles and then we've got the families that are the Murrays and the Murrachs and the Tallboys and the 
yeah Sir Godfrey Hilton so that's it transiting through the UK and here we're now into the US and there's the booths that were alleged to have killed President Lincoln there's the Thimblebees and the Thimblebee tab is quite interesting because I will explain in this video the naming of the Delaware River after the De La War family that is the Warren joke about the rabbits <laughs> okay and then we've got the Booths and the Hambies and that takes us right into the sensitive stuff that we were about to show you I should have shown you the Hutchison pedigree again because at the bottom of that it had I thought it had the profiling of the families, the Marburys. Ah, here it is. So, this is the links to the British monarchy. Francis Marbury was from Lincolnshire in England, 1555 to 1611. His wife is very closely in the bloodlines of, I think it's King Henry the First or Second in Britain. Okay, that's the link of the British monarchy to the presidential bloodlines and it's right at the very beginning of this branch of the story so Bridget Dryden is the key word and all of these families and the names that are represented have representatives in my hometown there's dozens of Hutchisons <laughs> many of them go to different denominations uh, and that is part of this story yet yeah, the fact that the founding member who is Anne Marbury and the woman Hutchison directly related to those people at the bottom of that story uh, they are religious heretics they set up new religions the Mormons are represented in this story yeah and all of it is to take ownership of the vast tracts of land and the people that are involved as captains in the local militias are the land grabbers that do the negotiations with the Indians it's really vicious <laughs> okay so uh, let's go back to the timeline and show you what else we're going to cover so that's the timeline this is oh. okay so this is the joke about these people on the west coast of Scotland is that is the Appleby region yeah and that is the apple that we keep referring you to <laughs> all of it is that religious context because this is the ancestry of the Piso family that faked it all up <laughs> okay so we've got individual names now let's go through them before I start to profile it Elisha this is one of the Hutchison linkages okay and that's blessedly where last it's very very difficult to find written histories of these people the bloodlines are all available but only as paragraphs of the lineage that they're in and how many family members they had their year of birth and their year of death so this is captain edward hutchison jr and i will profile his career as a land grabber and an advisor to the dispossessed indians yeah, and the irony is that he was killed by the Indians with their primitive weapons after his advice had rendered them weaponless. <laughs> All the Gatling guns go to the white man and they still were able to subdue Captain Edward Hutchison Jr. Okay, so next tab is Royal Marbury and this is the Francis Marbury list of famous descendants that is the Hutchison pedigree that you've just seen and Anne Hutchison is the one who was involved in those religious troubles and she appears on the outside to have been persecuted by the state but she's the bloodline that leads to all of the presidential issues and all of the people <laughs> that have become the head of NATO's armies and those English speaking pacts that make the deals with Tony Blair to sweep again and again and again into other people's countries in the holy lands in the name of the one true God 
okay so that's the Pratt and Sons links as well to the Mormons okay and <laughs> all of those people there are names all of the names that come up are represented in my hometown and represented all across the religious spectrum uh, right then so Royal Marbury Pratt and Sons that's the joke from the Blackadder team about retiring to Pratt and Sons once if they survive the trench combat okay <laughs> list of famous descendants so Bridget Dryden 1562 to 1645 are parents of great posterity in the American continent primarily through a few children they migrated from England in the early 1600s the ancestry of Bridget Dryden has been connected to English royalty making this family a rare and a rare and important gateway link to early European genealogy so this is the new land of the braves and the free okay and there's the launch pad for it Anne Marbury Pelham B the taking of Pelham whatever the train was called everything is covered up in popular culture yeah there's 1610 England that's out of Alford in Lincolnshire and Catherine Marbury is out of 1610 out of England into Rhode Island and that is the Richard Scott dynasties okay the same names keep coming up either side of the world and all of the poor people are the slaves who are sent to other sides of the world or the colonists who are sent to other sides of the world okay 1643 Pelham Bay Bronx County New Netherlands United States that's the Flemish coast <laughs> in old Europe right then and then you've got the links to the other people <laughs> that have been gullible enough to portray as enemies of the Bush family but Nixon is actually in the bloodline okay <laughs> and they've got the Springer Spaniel and it's all the same repeating joke okay and then you've got Barbara Bush and the menace of Barbara Bush and her name for a laugh and to indicate the power of these families and their intermarriages begins with the word pie she's a pierce okay and that's why Ali G says that she St Barbara is more powerful than George W <laughs> okay uh, she is actually the uh, she's the wife of Herbert Poppy Bush the Poppy Bush joke yeah there you can see the word pie all of it is a clue to where they came from in the first place and why this is still their family tree because that's their ancestors shall I give you a brief reminder of that now let's get on with the tabs okay the Bush family start the oil frauds and all of the spellings of Bush Overby are different to those that have been profiled by Peter Eyre and Gordon Bowden that's why uh, presumably Field McConnell has never heard of Bush Overby <laughs> a couple of planes keeping an eye on me there <laughs> okay and you've got the Zap name because when President Kennedy was killed the man who was paid fifty thousand dollars to be in exactly the right place on the grassy knoll to take the images of his brain coming out of the back of his head his name was Zapruder and the name of the family's oil company is Zapata <laughs> almost the same point in time when the Bushes are running the CIA and the investigations by the secret services into the killing of one of their family rivals for the president presidency and you know the result of that okay it will not open oh it's because I'm using the wrong computer okay so there's the Zapruder thing and all of the links to the to the uh, 
to the mafias <laughs> officially through the uh, okay Lloyds of London so just listen to this bit it's typical of what they do in the oil scams in 1965 the Zapata Mining Corporation all of those are their companies Zapata de Mexico, Amata Gas Corporation, Zapata Overseas listen to this especially if you're my neighbour who's been cheated by the Lloyds Banking Group in 1965 an oil rig that had cost three million dollars was reported lost in Hurricane Betsy and Zapata received a claim settlement of eight million dollars from Lloyds of London that's the McLeods of Sky that sink the ships for Lloyds of London. For this insurer sure to settle a claim for an oil platform disaster without any physical evidence was unprecedented. It's like the war bonds and the war insurance damages. The elites print the money for nothing. Okay, let's keep going. So that is the history of the Bush family. All of the different spellings of all of the names of their companies and let me show you if I don't have time to profile it this is what you need to look up okay HRG group the Zapata corporation and the Har Harbingers everything for them is a laugh <laughs> registered in Rochester New York and originating from an oil company started by a group including the former United States President George H.W. Bush in the Peter Ayer story, it's his dad that is the initiator of that company, and it brings uh, the man Motley Flint, who was murdered for cheating investors, yeah, in the cinema. Field McConnell had never heard of anything, any of that. Okay, so let's keep going down, and now you get another name that is <laughs> now makes me quake in my boots because this is my family name you've got Lang Hancocks running the mining interests in Australia this is the most legendary cir uh, signature on the American Treaty of Independence and it's signed by John Hancocks and his profession is a pirate he's a smuggler <laughs> yeah because everything that the crown do to America still takes the cash from Americans and it comes into her Royal Highness's coffers because that would be Queen Elizabeth I in those days okay and you remember all of the stories about the plantations Walter Raleigh and all of that empire upon which the sun has yet to set okay all of it based in Chicago the epicenter for fraud violence and the mafias yeah and the films about the untouchables and people like me coming together with the coppers and getting the job done on law enforcement all of that is a massive joke against the world's people like this one <laughs> Thimbleby okay they intrigued me as soon as I saw it you know this is a joke about the Dimbleby lineage, lineage. okay it's a whole series of interlocking jokes Compton is a very famous name in cricket <laughs> Lumley is a very famous name in the global empire upon which the sun has yet to set and the fraudulent BBC that laughs at every one of world history's jokes this is one of them okay so this is Henry Lumley have you heard of the woman uh, that is in the comedy teams in Britain called Lumley yeah <laughs> pretends that her interests are out there way out in the far east in the rubber plantations for the empire upon which the sun will never set this is Henry Lumley yeah, British soldier and governor of Jersey the tax haven right next door to Calvados and the French religious movements that took over the whole of Britain from the top and the bottom down and up all of it was taken over by the Murrays the Murrachs the Du Mornays all of it is a whole series of interlocking jokes and the Muir Ducks are part of that story as you know all of them run the kingdoms run the dukedoms and they run the bishopric by planting the relatives into the massive cathedrals and all of them get built and pulled down again all for profit and all of the world history is fighting over all of those chattels in what could be peaceful countries <laughs> okay so 
He was the second son of John Lumley and Mary Compton, and younger, that's a huge cricket name, and the younger brother of Richard Lumley, 1st Earl of Scarborough. Yeah, this is the Jimmy Savile stuff. This is the stuff about the collapsing cliffs. <laughs> yeah, and let's keep going down just in case there's more, because I will not have time to return to this tab. And they're fighting battles all over Landon, the siege of Namur. So we're getting our own back on Namur for the Battle of Boromir and the French people that came out of Namur to brutalise Scotland. Yeah, all of it happening right up to the 17th century, the 18th century, when the Jacobite Wars happened and the French are in there pitching again. <laughs> okay, uh, he entered Parliament as a Knight of the Shire for Sussex. So if you look right to the bottom, we end up with being the MPs for Arundel, which is the Dukes of Norfolk that we've talked about at length since Longshanks was the boss and he is interlocked in all of the family trees with Howard of Arundel. <laughs> yeah, links to Flanders, the wars of succession, everything. He served as governor, governor of Jersey from 1704 to 1722. Okay, and if you take Savile's, uh, a couple of letters out of Savile's, you get the uh, same stuff as the Delaware story. Okay. Let's have another look at some of the Dimbleby jokes. Okay, so Thimbleby is on the bloodline for the American presidents, out of the Piso bloodline. Okay, and Dimbleby is a leading journalist in the UK, and you should see the people that are allowed to give the inspirational speech. Okay, Richard Dimbleby is the father, and you can see that Dillis Thomas, and we have to launch Dylan Thomas, as the poet laureate in Wales at that time, and all of it is a sad, sad set of cover-ups. Okay, and this one, one of them got married to a Belinda Giles uh, when he was well into his 70s. There's very little profiling of Jocelyn Dimbleby or what her maiden name was, yeah? And they go to Oxford, he gets a third class degree, <laughs> yeah? educationally subnormal which is perfect because you then live your life in the BBC studios and the uh, Bullingdon Club yeah and as long as you can put your finger out when you're having your gin and when you see his picture in the profile for him <laughs> uh, Dimbleby I think we might be able to show you that picture he understands intimately the rabbit joke can you see it <laughs> that he understands it intimately yeah Winston <laughs> the world's biggest killer yeah intimately understands it <laughs> uh, and let me show you because I want to keep with the presidential bloodlines and the massive jokes that they share okay this is Richard Dimbleby lecture okay and these are the people that were giving the inspirational speeches to the British people before Richard Dimbleby, the legend at the BBC, died with testicular cancer. Yeah, 50 something died with testicular cancer. The Richard Dimbleby lecture was founded in his memory and is delivered every year by an influential public thief. Oh no, it's his figure. The 2004 lecture was delivered by vacuum cleaner tycoon James Dyson. He's in the stories by uh, Nicholas, the, the Treasure Island stories about the men who stole the world. And Dyson is a hero because he actually pays tax. <laughs> he gave the lecture in 2005. Okay, that's Nicholas uh, Shaxon. S H A S X O N. He lives in the Channel Islands and is an expert on those who actually pay tax and brings them right into the public lectures that are invited by people of the prominence of Dimbleby's because they give the tears up at the funerals of our great nation. All of the Remembrance Sunday ceremonies, they are the people that laugh at it, yet yeah, behind closed doors. Yeah, and their biggest sin 
and indiscretion is saying Jesus wept out loud because they know that there never was a Jesus <laughs> okay so James Dyson gives the lecture in 2005 Met Police Commissioner Sir Ian Blair gives it in 2006 sorry in 2005 uh, so the 2004 is Dyson 2005 is Ian Blair head of the Met Police next one is General Sir Mike Jackson the man who brutalised the Balkans and Iraq and is interlocks with Rebecca Brooks my new LinkedIn friend in 2006 he gave the lecture he brags on Hansard about his earning power in the mercenary armies and the private security firms that he and Richard Dearlove run he murders people on Bloody Sunday in Ireland and everybody gets away with it because Tony Blair's in charge at that time all over my website yeah 2006 by genetics pioneer Dr J Craig Venter the academics with their head in the bottom of their test tubes yeah all of it completely premeditated to take the time and attention of the governmental frauds that mean that none of the universities have any funds anymore yeah that is the uh, stem cell sector that we feature in the Dave Allen video and all of the science that is right in the bottom of the test tube and never takes the human race any further forward towards civilization. In 2007 the lecture was given by Prince Charles. You might have heard of him. Everything that he says now is immune from publication since I came home in 2009. The 2010 le lecture was <laughs> delivered by cancer victim, Discworld author, Sir Terry Pratchett, who's got dementia. <laughs> by author Michael Morpungu in 2011, and Nobel Prize winning geneticist, Sir Paul Nurse, fraudster in the NHS in 2012. Microsoft founder and philanthropist, Bill Gates, delivered the lecture in 2013, and the thief from the IMF, and the successor, yeah, in both the Bank Paribas and the IMF to Strauss Kahn the rapist is Christine Lagarde yeah, in the French profiteering system with the Hollande family that are profiled as socialists who launch banks of their own as soon as they become president and they get divorced from their wife and she gets a bank too <laughs> so that is the R Richard Dimbleby lecturers and he died of cancer aged 50 <laughs> right then and the Delaware joke is here ok and that is a joke about the uh, ok so the Delaware family Thomas West a whole string of people have had the Delaware title in England ok and what you've got is that these people are talking to John Rolfe and his wife Pocahontas into English society the visitors from Virginia where the Dilla Wars are the governor generals for a time are in London to raise funds for the Virginia Company of London all of the scams launched even in 1616 and do you get the Dilla War in joke <laughs> yeah you, they have been shamed into taking the EN of the end ok <laughs> and that is the Delaware ok crossing the Delaware almost every stanza in the Marx Brothers song about Lydia the tattooed lady and I understand some of it is about murdered presidents some of it is about decent presidents who tried to bring the funding back to democracy a lot of it is about sovereignty and the jokes and all of the things about sanity clauses and the sanity clause and the Christmas joke yeah the Xmas joke it is just vicious okay next one is Captain oh this is the one who's the land grabber the private militia man and he's married to the Hambies and the buttons yeah and the buttons and the thimbles yeah do you get it <laughs> all of it it's a, there is not much published in articulate historical fashion there's just 
the jokes and you need to dissect them uh, and some of them are openly declared yeah, as genocides against the Indians for profit and for the lands and all of them represent the same religious movement that is Christianity and all of them is prepared to slaughter their neighbours hang the witches, burn the witches <laughs> yeah, and the parents all have the same lineages ok, and that's Captain Hutchison I think yeah, and I'll show you the little brief statement about him at the top land grabber, local li militia leader, judiciary dad of the defender of other denominational martyrs husband of Mrs. Miss Hamby negotiates Indian land rights and settlements sorry yeah and the his daughter or it may have been his wife is the so he's the dad of a new religious heretic uh, negotiates Indian land rights and settlements English speaking from previous home in Lincoln UK all of them are from the UK one generation later America is belongs to the Queen or the King Henry the first <laughs> in this story with the Hutchison linkage and the linkage to the woman that was that name uh, Dryden and parents launched new religion in Christianity killed by Native Americans in King Philip's war yeah King Philip's war is a joke too scammed out of their guns but they were able to kill Captain Hutchison yeah with the red Indian arrows okay so here's the King Philip's war I'd never heard of that so I felt obligated to open it up okay <laughs> and this is what it is King Philip's war began the development of a greater European American mafia oh sorry identity the colonists trials without significant English government support gave them a group identity separate and distinct from that of subjects of the king yeah believe that if you like <laughs> right then but let me show you what the war was okay sometimes called the first Indian war Metacom's war Metacomet's war or Metacom's rebellion was an armed conflict between Native American inhabitants of present day New England and English colonists under Native American allies in 1675 to 78 the war is named for the main leader of the Native American side Metacomet who had adopted the English name King Philip as a piss take <laughs> yeah it's got the words in it <laughs> in honour of the previously friendly relations between his father and the original Mayflower pilgrims it's got the words in it <laughs> and they want me to keep taking the pills yeah got the words in it and all of the truth that I am bringing out has them in a state of panic especially when you proclaim the potential links of the Professoria in Dunedin to the war crimes yeah, all across Eastern Europe and that is Holocausts commencing 1942 <laughs> okay so Metacom was the second son of a Wampanoag chief Masu Masa Susa and that's the Massachusetts naming okay who had coexisted peacefully with the pilgrims Metacom succeeded his father in 1662 and reacted against the European settlers continued encroaching onto Wampanoag lands at Taunton out of the West Country in 1671 he was humiliated when colonists forced him to sign a new peace agreement that included the surrender of Indian guns yeah so scammed out of his land and his guns but he still gets the better <laughs> of the soft profiteer when officials in Plymouth County hanged three Wampanoags in 1675 for the murder of a Christianized Indian Indian Metico so the Indians are the victims of all of it yeah but the people like Captain what's his face <laughs> yeah 
uh, Captain Hutchison get to all of it to themselves. They are the judiciary, they are the advisors, they carve up the land. Metacom's alliance launched a united assault on colonial towns throughout the region. And that was when uh, Captain Hutchison was buried. Uh, okay, so, summary, what is this one? Oh, this is about the bush lineage. They've got every sort of things that they need to cover up. <laughs> yeah, so all of the stories that I've been told about the Cock family and d them dying up near Oban just a couple of years ago when my kids were dating people who lived up in Oban and my niece lives there too. <laughs> yeah, the Cocks are reputed to be the neighbours of Robert Maxwell in Czechoslovakia. That's the Robert Maxwell, the mercenary army leader in the Thirty Years' Religious War. That's the true Robert Maxwell. Here we've got the cover for the Cox being married into the Bush dynasty. Born 1960, is the president and CEO of the Wine Institute, acting as chief lobbyist in Washington, D.C. and Sacramento. Yet the sacrament, do you get it? Yeah, water to wine, every religious celebration for the Catholic nation that the Bushes pretended to be when they denounced the condoms. Yeah, but when they become Lubavitchers, they're not really interested in that. And their son, I forget what his name was, is involved in Italy, in the Vatican, rewriting the Bible. Okay, so where would you like to start? I could stop there and just let you dwell on it, but let's take you back to the very, very beginning with some pictures. Yeah, and you are beginning to understand the rabbit sign now, the fascist icon. Connies in the Lord of the Rings movies, conservatives in politics, and in these series of vicious images. They are Arsenal Football Club, that's the Arsenal relative of the bloodline, way back in the Macedonian years. This is the cover for it, the massive city of Lagos in Nigeria. Yeah, a massive city. Look at the floods, look at the hovels that the people live in, look at the streets and the chaos, yeah, and compare that to what Obama now has. And you heard Field McConnell telling me that he went to the same school as Obama. Obama's name is Barry Satorio. He's not an American citizen. And all of these stories just keep adding up to the chaotic world that we live in. Yeah, and to cover the massive crimes and the revolutions and the genocides that we're talking about all through this story. So, let me take you to that big first screenshot that I showed you first. Or shall we just quickly go through the summary of the bloodline below when we get out of Western Scotland? Okay, so there we are, King Philip's War. That's what we've just covered. There is Eliza Hutchison, Hannah Hawkins, Elizabeth Clark. Let's have a look how far up we have to go before we find Scotland. So there's the Indians. Uh, being involved in the killing of Captain Hutchison. Uh, there is the Portsmouth Compact. <laughs> was a document signed on March the 7th that established the settlement of Portsmouth, which is now a town in the state of Rhode Island. It was the first document in history that served both political and religious ties with Mother England, enslaved already by 1638. Okay, the document was written and signed in Boston by a group of men who followed Anne Hutchison, a banished Christian dissident from Massachusetts. And there is the signature of her relative. I think it's the ninth one down. Okay. So, sold into slavery. And all of the slaves need to be gotten rid of. There's Captain Edward Hutchison. Born Alford Lincoln, 1613, died Marlborough with the 
American Indian in his back he had all of the gunpowder and all of the weapons still they were spirited enough to take him down okay right then so that's the American phase let's keep going up there's the Borodins, there's the tall boys, that's the American phrase. There's the Amphilvilles, that's us on the verge of Europe with the commons. All of the Bruce stories, all of the stories that I've yet to tell you about the tabs that are further along here. Because since they started the psychiatric sectioning, I have no peace, I have no capacity to handle my financial affairs. I've got to do the sectioning stuff, yeah? <laughs> They've given me a deferral until the end of the month before I actually have to take the drugs but I've yet to meet the new man because the coward who imposed it upon me, Basil Switzer, has now left the region and he's left me in charge of the MSC man, yeah, who is uh, Guy Cooper. That could be the Coopers that were also involved in the brutalisation of the American Indians and are the Fenimore Cooper 500 nation colours. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really tragic and all they're able to get away with in the name of law enforcement in Scotland. Thank you to everyone that is talking to me openly about what I'm exposing right at the head of government. Yeah, because all of them are complicit in all of the things that I've reported since 2010. And these are much more serious because this is pan-global treason and genocide for all of human history okay so we're up to the Scottish contingents now and that means that we can go down and have a wee look a closer look at those bloodlines round about the same period <laughs> so there's the Thimbleby story and the Booths are the people that tried to, that killed Lincoln in the theatre if you believe that I walked down that road walked past the theatre and President Obama on the day of his inauguration in 2008 almost ran me over next to the statue of General Pershing and the tank right next to your door to the White House okay I was at a neuroscience congress that day I was had no insight in any of this at that time okay there's the Hambies, the Bluets that is the bluets that appear in the dad's army story in England. It's ever so difficult to find facts on them other than just the raw data on who they were married to, how many children they had, how many of them died in utero or as children. And sometimes that is quite a telling story. Catherine Hamby of Massachusetts, M. Edward Hutchison. Okay, and there we've got Edward. That's the family that we've just profiled and the Indian culling and his being a member of the judiciary and there's the nip muck Indians get it in the neck okay the Quakers are involved all of it involves the courts and the carve up of the land they are actually Puritans and their spouses are Hambies and then the Buttons the Dimbleby thimble jokes And right at the top, you've got the Pisos. And right at the top, you've got the Pharaohs. And right at the top, you've got the Roman Emperors. All roads lead to Rome and from it. Right then, and here's the American connection, okay? The Hutchison's every generation for all time. Okay, the Hawkins, that's the cover in the Putnam's monthly magazine for all of the jokes about the crimes. And... George Herbert Bush went to the warmongering Yale University that Greg Hallett and I have profiled already and when you look at the war criminal issues and Greg Hallett's data published over 30 years without any challenge to the accuracy yeah, or any litigation against his denunciation of the monarchy and its legitimacy yeah, all of that resulted in his disappearance Edward Hutchison, Lydia Foster, Elizabeth Hutchison, Nathaniel Robbins and that launches people into popular culture. Did you see the joke about 
the pistol, the movies about the pistols, and that's the piezo joke. The movies about the uh, Pelham train hijacking, yeah, in New York. All of the actors in that, and Harold Robbins' output, all of it is covered up. Hannah Ruck, that is the Bristolian expression, yeah, and that is used in the Ovidorzine pet movies and all of the actors that are ordinary working men in that some of them die really really young <laughs> okay uh, and you've got the lilies of the field yet yeah, tragic tragic the breaks come in through the treasure island stories by the Stevensons and the Howards are the links to the high marshal of England and Longshanks' interlocks to the Dukes of Arundel. And that's the Balfours now that live in those properties. All of it has been explained to me in the last six weeks, despite the immense harassment that I've had to live with. <laughs> and I'm still drug free and I'm still capable of doing it. The sun has gone in every time I mention that. Okay, Samuel Prescott Phillips P. Fee, yeah, the Howards, the Howards, Shellman, Eleanor Fee, Mr. James Smith Bush, Eleanor Roosevelt, Catherine, the Warrens, yeah, De La Warren, <laughs> De La War, yeah, all of it is a joke for all of them, and the Warren is the home of the rabbits, and that is Lagos of Macedonia, and there's the jokes about Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal is one of the first in that ancient bloodlines. Okay, so there is the pictures that I was making when they shut down my uh, energy and they began to get really heavy with the sectioning threat. Okay, because these are the world's biggest secrets. Okay, let's go up to full screen. So there's Lagos and all of the stories now get covered up. They become games on Facebook, they become games in toy shops, and that's Lagos, Eid Eok. <laughs> yeah, and Eor is the joke about the donkey and Jesus. Okay, there never was a Jesus. In the Bible story now, he is Eor, the donkey, is Jesus. On Palm Sunday, he's Jesus. In Pinocchio, yeah, it's every one of the ordinary troops that go to war. Yeah, that is the uh, story of it. Goodbye, Mr. Chips, too. And all of that is absolutely ruthless. So they've got the donkey ears and the donkey tails, and that is all of the world's innocent children. There's the Arsenal joke, because Arsenal is right at the top of that Ptolemaic dynasty. I have not got pictures of that in this one. And these are the people that are coming after me, yeah, for my insight into why the asylums are still open, yeah, and why <laughs> people are persecuted like that, into why no one in Africa ever gets a life, because they cannot share the things that we've had for 200 years already. Aung San Shao Ki, she lived in what is now the house of a very rich doctor in Grampian on Spey, Granton on Spey, yeah, that was her safe house for nearly two decades. My confidant told me that, yeah, he will not talk to me at all now since the Kelso surgery became my enemies instead of my colleagues in exposing the polypharmacy thing that launched my sectioning threat in 2011. Okay, Scottish borders, they are the people that are persecuting me relentlessly for my exposure of their debt pool and how it's run and how Kenny Evans my brother and my second cousin created it. All of the bastards come and visit me in New Zealand pretending to be friends of the family. Okay, there's the pyramidal and extra pyramidal pathways that I'm an expert in at the cellular level. Yeah, and the toxic drugs that they intend to give me just to shut me up because I'm exposing what Bill Scott does in the drug commissioning sector and what he's done to the doctor's prospects and imposing that deal on them. 
that you get 40% of your salary if you do the wrong things for your patients and some of them go on tax-free mercy ships visits with Anglag ships and they treat the juntas and dictators in sub-Saharan Africa and there is the woman that gets what I get which is sectioning yeah, because she dropped out of the Gazprom deal and there's a huge global fuss made about that but our children even at that time are still on the board of the Gazprom project <laughs> okay right then so Lagos the rabbit is the world's biggest secret and that was what I was working on when the sectioning threat really hits the fan because that is the Winnie the Pooh yeah that is the Winnie the Pooh joke yeah, and that leads to all of the conflicts and all of the jokes about all of the conflicts that are shared by the warmongering universities like Yale, like Georgetown and all of the places. Yeah, and somewhere in the story, let's see, let's get that big screen image back. Uh, Okay, so that's the Royal Marbury's. Here we go. And so it's already open. There we have it. Right then. So let's zoom in a little bit more. So there you have. George W. Bush at the top of his bloodline and that takes you back to Hannah Ruck and all of those characters that we've just gone through yet the Hutchisons are at the bottom here here is William Hutchison and Anne Marbury that's the Marbury bloodline that is so important Let, launched by Francis Marbury out of the UK and that's Bridget Dryden with the links to the British monarchy 1562 to 1645 yeah, so all of that drop down from the Piso family to this point begins to launch all of these fraudsters in American history. <laughs> so that's George W. Bush with his... The there he is. 1946, became the 43rd President of the United States. George H. W. Bush, 1924. Prescott Sheldon Bush and that is Sheldon Cooper in all of those comedies that my family watched even in New Zealand all of them are obfuscation tools a Wall Street banker and fundraiser he served in the United States Senator from Connecticut from 1952 to 1962 and that is the great grandfather that was alleged to have launched the uh, the uh, Bush Overby scam with Bill Gamble, the knight in Britain, educated at Fetis like Tony Blair and the Fetis training for all of those pol policemen like Sir Ian Blair that we heard about earlier. Right then, <laughs> let's scan along the top. There's FDR, we've talked about him in the bloodline before and all of the people, his decision never to take children to war in World War II. Yeah, his decision to appoint Mellon and to put all of the citizens' gold in Fort Knox. Still there. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, that's the bank Mellon joke. They are the sponsors for both Oxford and Cambridge and the whole thing stinks of treason. Okay, Delano, the Delano sausage, Roosevelt joke, Delaney's donkey. John Philip Duquesne, a knight of the British Empire and general during World War I, he later survived governor of Malta between 1927 to 1931. Every one of the global leadership team becomes a knight of Malta because it's part of the biblical transit for the Pauline mission, 
which is hilarious for them and absolutely ballistic for the gods because all of the volcanoes and earthquakes erupt all along those pathways and they still think that that is even better because they are the masters of the gods in the heavens. Stephen Arnold Douglas, 1831 to 1861. In 1860, he ran for president against Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, we've seen the attempts to get Lincoln assassinated by one of their own family members. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's them trying to shut down my internet access. Ah... <laughs> This one is on the Supreme Court, that one with the whiskers, yeah? He's the one that helped Brandeis and Untermeyer, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. Formidable whiskers. He served 20 years on the Massachusetts Supreme Court. He was then appointed a Justice of the United States Supreme Court, where he served for almost 30 years. Dates, 1841 to 1935, colleague of Untermeyer and Brandeis that extended World War I from 1916 to 1918. Isn't that funny? And then the Bancrofts and the links to the, where were we before? Okay, so here's Mitt Romney, a presidential candidate in my lifetime. Good looking guy, 1947, financier and business entrepreneur, served as the president of the Salt Lake Organising Committee for the 2002 Winter Olympic Games, all of them at the trough, all of them professional games, all of them followed up by the Paralympic Games, another joke at the Acts of God and the capacity to be superior to the gods in the skies. So there's FDR, this is the one that we got shut down on. Knight of the British Empire and general during World War One, later served as Governor of Malta between 1927 to 31. Stephen Arnold Douglas, in 1860 he ran for president against Lincoln. He served as an Illinois congressman and then senator from 1843 until his death in 1861. All of them go down to the Hutchison family. Helman Pratt, this is the Pratt and Son jokes. Anna Amelia Pratt, yeah, it's in the joke about this. Yeah, the time team, the Pratt and Son jokes, the predecessors to the Romney family who become candidates for the presidency. Okay? And Romney was quite prominent when these videos were being made. Right then, stay at the top. Next one along is Melville Weston Fuller, the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, served from 1888, and that's the year we went, all of us went, to Khartoum, <laughs> out of Britain, until his death in 1910. Melville, a legendary name out of Scotland. Frederick Augustus Fuller, world, world, savages. Charles William Eliot, the American educator, was elected president of Harvard, another one of the warmongers. Yeah. Noam Chomsky's outlet yeah, until he went to uh, I forget what the second one was in 1859 his 40 year presidency was the longest in the university's history uh, ok, Harvard that is Boston that is the Boston Tea Party all of the smuggling jokes all of the, the wars between the great nations, France, Britain America all of the culls of the Indians all through all of that period and in the UK uh, sorry in France we have the same revolutionary culls 
Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. 1841 to 1935 served 20 years on the Massachusetts Supreme Court. He was then appointed justice, a justice of the United States Supreme Court where he served for almost 30 years. Amelia Lee Jackson, Charles Jackson, Hannah Tracy, Hannah Gookin, Nathaniel Gookin, So this is live, I've not looked at any of this before. The Bancroft's not photo not available by request of the Bancroft family. Little were they to know that this was to become NATO and the Mafia globally. Anne Bancroft was an actress, a financier in 1879 to 1933, financier and businessman, but was the president of Dow Jones and Company the publishers of the Wall Street Journal. Little wonder that they want to be dissociated from that history. <laughs> OK. I'll stop in a bit because it's getting quite repetitive and these are just financial criminals now. It's much less interesting than the bedroom behaviours, don't you think? Erskine, Hamilton, Childers. We've talked about Freskin and the links to Hamilton and the psychiatric uh, location of the panels that are persecuting me from range and they put psychiatrists who's experts in murder in Scotland on my panel yet to make sure that they intimidate me as much as they possibly can. This leader became president of Ireland in 1973 never heard of him but died in 1974 yeah, at the age of 71, no, 69, for almost 30 years, notably as Deputy Prime Minister. And you've got names that are very familiar to every sports fan in the country, and that is the Osgood name plays for Chelsea when they win the FA Cup. <laughs> and their stadium is named after a battlefield, and all of it, is trivial just to cover up the massive sins of the contenders to be the world's owners and the main figureheads of the world's corrupted democracies that are now family friends less than 5,000 people across the globe sharing all of the world's wealth all of them out <laughs> of homeland yeah English speaking homelands and they go back and pick up their wives after a 20 year dwell period and all of them are trained to dismember the new country which is why I'm showing you what happens in a tag university and what happens as a legacy of the Nazi diasporas all around the globe and America hosts loads of those people Okay, this one looks kind of frightening. Louis S. Achenlosch, 19... Oh, he's still alive, I shouldn't have said that. 1917 to the present day. This writer and intellectual produced more than 50 novels that addressed the much something of 19th and 20th century America. <laughs> Moral issues... <laughs> he's got his mug shot with the legends in morality. Stanton's play for Hibernian uh, and their managers are friends of Longshanks, their directors yeah, that's the Petries Sanford's peg leg, yeah, the joke that the able danger people keep using let's take you now down to show you whose loins all of these people were sired from Bridget Hutchison, John Sanford let's make our way towards the middle we're right back in the beginning of the 16th, 17th century. Hutchison's and Thomas Savage. And here we've got the superstars from Grand Britannia. Yeah, William Hutchison, 1586 to 1642. Anne Marbury, 1591 to 1643. This early American colonist and religious leader left her native England to settle in Massachusetts Local leaders objected to some of her religious teaching and she was banished to Rhode Island where persecution continued. She then moved her family to what is now the Bronx, New York, 
where almost all were killed by Indians in 1643. <laughs> okay, and what we've got is that there are other bloodlines too. Where I don't know where Nixon is hidden. It must be on one of those other tabs. Anne Hutchison, John Howland. Okay, so these are incredibly all over the walls of museums. The Anne Ch Hutchison chart that we've just seen is located. Actually, it's strange that it's not Anne Hutchison at the bottom of that. <laughs> it was another Hutchison. The Hutchison chart is located on the wall of the main floor of the Family History Library. It shows many of her well-known descendants, including among her descendants are George W. Bush, Mitt Romney, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. and others. And the sun's coming pouring out now, I'm not sure why. But this is the John Howland chart now. <laughs> okay, so let's read you that word for word. And we'll maybe try and click on it. The John Howland chart is located on the wall across from the Family Search Centre in the Joseph Smith Memorial Building. This char chart shows many of the descendants of John Howland of the Mayflower. Yeah, that's the first ship to sail from England, the founding fathers of the Christianity movement. And the sun's gone in again. <laughs> okay, Joseph, Ira, Earl, including the relatives are Joseph, Ira, Earl, Sir Winston Churchill, Joseph Smith Jr., Emma Hale, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, George Walker Bush, Richard Milhouse Nixon, Gerald R. Ford. File Howland Chart PDF. Let's have a wee look until my batteries give out. Yeah, I've not really gone into this in detail. I could not get it to open last night. Uh, let's see if we can get something up now. So this is another series of legendary presidents. Yeah, this is the president who's guilty of electoral fraud, but also of genocide and launching the uh, genocide into the Golden Triangle. That is, yeah, the same joke as the uh, as the uh, Rolling Stones launch onto their album cover for the Paint It Black album about fascism all over other people's continents. Okay, Richard Milhouse Nixon also has the Springer Spaniel on his knee as an affiliation to the elites in Britain. He has Springer Spaniels as he runs the drugs with uh, uh, Onassis and with all of the triumvirate that succeed them and that is run by Prince Philip by then. Howland chart PDF click to view chart don't think we're going to get that. Let's see if we can go back to the original oh <laughs> we won't get it because that's the wrong computer ah can't open the specified file. Let's try opening the original web page on okay So that's the Hutchison chart that we've just seen. And this one, this time we should be able to access it. Yippee! Okay, so we maybe have to open another file.
So that's telling us that we need to view it as it appeared at that time and the most up-to-date version of that is in 2007. Uh, let's have another go on the PDF. Ooh, we've got something. <laughs> okay, so all of the bloodlines that you now know have got direct linkages for Roosevelt and Bush to the Pizos that wrote the Christian Bible. There they are, Bush and Roosevelt. Okay, all the way at the bottom, you've got the Pizos and you've got Lagos the rabbit. Yeah, the Macedonian bunny ears joke right through human history and the V sign for all of the great conflicts. Okay, there he is. <laughs> Same bloodlines, Jenny Jerome, all of that has been confirmed in by Greg Hallett and me and all of the images are online. The more secretive aspects about him being <laughs> the father of the current queen, yet yeah, by artificial insemination, they will not talk about that for any reason. Yet yeah, they will not release that truth, which is why Greg Hallett no longer talks about it. And Jim Fetzer, when we made the interview on Remembrance Sunday, confirmed that he believed that his friend Greg had been taken out. They've planted him with a hopelessly inept body double who never talks about any illegitimacy issues in the monarchy or any of the issues that he talked about that lead to all of the ownership of all of the central banks being in these private hands. And this is Gerald Ford that got the Murdochs out of Australia using the Nugan Hand Bank as their funders. Yeah, now all of it is totally corrupted. I don't know who the hails are, but let's have a wee scan through it. <laughs> okay, so Sir Winston Churchill is at the top. Jenny Jerome is there. Randolph Churchill is there. So that's correct and accurate. She's an actress. She has sexual partners, over 200 of them. <laughs> this is jo Joseph Errol. So this is live on air in my living room. I've not looked at this before. Don't know who the Errols are. So the Errols is on the left, Churchill is second in, and that takes you to Arthur Howland and John Howland, Mayflower passengers. Okay? And the people that went on the first three ships to New Zealand are the Abrahams that are in the Professoriate. And have you heard of Abraham in a religious context before? <laughs> yeah, the founding fathers of New Zealand. Same story everywhere that the English-speaking nations steal and commit the genocides. Okay, Henry Howland, and that is Tilly, <laughs> Elizabeth Tilly, and that is the joke about the Italian kings way back in Romulus and Remus's time. Mary Howland, Mary Newland, okay, uh, Woodworth, Howland, Damon, Jason Smith, Mary Lee, Howland, Crocker, Huckins, John Lewis, <laughs> Harry Chapman, let's just scan in a little bit closer, fascinating. <laughs> I was always turned off by the genealogy on the telly because it does not explain world ownership in a very easy to understand way. Okay, so Wilcox, Ambrose Hall, David Wilcox, Anna Baker, Sarah Smith, Wilcox, Dorothy Allen, Deborah Russell, Benjamin Allen, Hasadiah Smith, Jonathan Russell, Deborah Howland, Jonathan Smith. So then we'll have to look up the Howlands and the Demons, yeah, before I go to Kip tonight. Ever so insightful. And we can have a wee look at Nixon. Richard Milhouse Nixon, Thelma Catherine Ryan, ah, Saving Private Ryan, 
Hannah Milhouse, Francis Anthony Nixon, Anna Park Burdog, Franklin Milhouse, Jean M. Hemingway. Every one of the New World Order authors is a cover for something. Always it's deceit and stealing and cheating and killing. Okay? Judith Smith Bird Dog, I'm not sure what that is, how do you pronounce that? Bird G Anthony Smith Lydia Willits Mary Allen Thomas Smith Elizabeth Howland Jediah Allen Okay <laughs> uh, Rickardson and this is on the right hand column I forget who we have across here Oh Gerald Ford Gerald Rudolph Ford is dad Dorothy Eyre Gardner married a couple of times Addie Augusta Eyre Lord Addison Gardner George Manny Eyre Amy Gridley Butler oh Butler, Rhett Butler in the lead up to 1939 yeah that's the Rhett Butler story about uh, the uh, <laughs> the power of land yeah that is the uh, oh goodness me the American Revolution movie yeah Rhett Butler and Gone with the Wind yeah about the brutalization of your nation and the need to build it again from the rubble and the emancipation in inverted commas of the slaves okay <laughs> I think we'll stop there there's a Wilbur Howland Rickardson Judith Sampson, Howland, Abigail, Mary Newland, Howland, okay, the Tilly one, and just, did, that is quite stunning, because that is ancient Rome, okay, and the marks in this one with the Smith bloodline, not sure which Smith that is, Joseph Smith Jr., Emma Hale, Joseph Smith Sr., don't know who they are in America, the Hales are Emma, Nathaniel Lewis's Gershom Lewis, Elizabeth Huckins, John Lewis, <laughs> Hope Chipman, John Huckins, Hope Howland, John Chipman. Okay, it's getting boring. Okay, I'm going to stop now and I'm going to take you back to how all of it is launched by Lagos. And it is a tragedy. I think we'll have seen all of these slides in earlier videos already and it's all about that yeah and this lot are doing that to me yeah I've got to post yet yeah, the discussion I made on the clinical issues that are facing me and how <laughs> the sad man that is persecuting me to silence me and you need to watch the uh, Odessa video and the Nazi diasporas that take you right into the professoriate, yeah, that is a uh, professor of psychiatry, yeah, who now is, who was the Pfizer drugs magnet, and he is, and what have we got here, <laughs> yeah, just some of the workaday scams that these people run all across the world, that's Ernst and Young, one of the big four auditors, and that is Robert Ralston McCracken, that's the Dr. McCracken jokes on the telly, on the BBC. Nothing to do with the American presidency. <laughs> but, uh, and that is the team that is having me sectioned for my insight into the frauds of the British government, the Scottish government, the crimes against the people in Iraq, the inquest chairs for that, and Rifkin being on the directorates with him. Yeah. There's all of the profiteering between Syria and the United Kingdom and the constitutional monarch. There's the Mental Health Assessment Act, which means that you need now to have no definition of any illness to get a former copper who you've exposed as fraud in the NHS or being guilty of fraud in the NHS for the past four years. Because my wife, on behalf of him, out of Chipping Norton, wants me sectioned and silenced. 
there's the Cook's taxis that scam me out of several jobs. There is the absolutely shameful obfuscation of all of the images that are associated with all of these p keywords when you look for them.